the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. Amen. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. This Sunday is also known as Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete from the Latin meaning rejoice. Although some of the readings don't seem very rejoiceful, but today we light the pink candle or the rose candle, the third candle, and the array, the Advent wreath. We also have the focus today with our flowers of being pink or rose, thanks to our altar guild and florist. In some churches, we would have rose, a rose frontal or rose vestments. In my old church in New Jersey, we had uh, rose uh, vestments for this Sunday. <coughs> which is also like the fourth Sunday in Lent, which is called Atari Sunday. This is a time where we kind of have a break. Now, it's interesting, though, because what are we really having a break from? Advent itself is a break, is it not? As you know, Advent comes from the Latin word adventus, which means coming. So we wait for the coming of our Lord. We wait in this time. We heard, of course, in James that we wait. The Lord is near. We must be patient. Although if your weekend is like my weekend yesterday, then it's really more like a marathon to the manger than it is for an actual slowing down and waiting. It's interesting about the pink candle. There's something a little bit incongruous about that. As you may remember, that purple is our color for Lent, and in the olden days we used purple for Advent, but now we focus on blue for Advent, the serum blue, Marian blue, perhaps the color of Mary, as we see her depicted in so much, as we'll hear about her life more next week. And so the reason for the change is not just because we want to have a different color, but because the actual rose color, Gaudete, we say rejoice. Because in the original church, in the early days, Advent was like a mini Lent. It was a time, as you know, Lent, where we needed a preparation time, a time for self-reflection before Easter, the highest holy day in our church. And yet, in the early church, we had the ranking of the highest holy days of Easter being first and then Pentecost, and then Epiphany. <coughs> now things have changed. We still have Easter, thank goodness, as number one, and yet Christmas has taken over. We still have the third holiday as Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. But in the early church, the beginning of Advent was right up until about, started at, and it really kind of took off around the fifth century in Gaul, in what is northern France today. And what they would do is, they just like Lent, they counted back 40 days, but not from Christmas. We counted 40 days back from Epiphany. And so if you actually count it from January 6th back, you go 40 days, which ends up being the fourth Sunday prior to Christmas Day. And so that's why it became a kind of mini Lent. And then on this Sunday, we were able to take a break on this Rejoice Sunday, this Gaudete Sunday, this time of having a little bit of break, even with the liturgical color significance, a little change. But we don't really focus on that anymore, of Advent being a mini Lent. Now, some of my colleagues in this diocese still begin today's acclamation, just like Lent, in their churches. They would say, bless the Lord who forgives all our sins, because their focus is on the penitentiality of Advent. And yet we have plenty of that, don't we, when we get to Lent. And so today we just slow down. We just continue to be in that waiting period. We don't focus on our sins like we do in Lent, so in a way, it's almost as if we could replace that rose-colored candle with actually another blue candle. Because we don't, we don't have the, the need to say, rejoice, we have a break. Because it's not Lent anymore. Our Advent is not a mini Lent anymore. And I support that and I'm glad for that because we can focus then, instead of actually on ourselves as we do in Lent, 
we can then focus on what is about to happen. Christ coming, Mary being out to here with child. And we'll hear more about her next week. Next week we call Mary Sunday usually for Sunday of Advent because she's right about to give birth. She's on her way now. She and Joseph on the way from Nazareth down to Bethlehem. Another name for this Sunday here, uh, third Sunday of Advent, is called Stir Up Sunday. Anybody know why? Stir up the Christmas pudding, perhaps. I'm not a cook, so I'm, I'll take your word for it. But look at our collect. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. I like the pudding one better. I think I like that one better. <laughs> Who doesn't like food this time of year? Christmas pudding. We also see, of course, in our story of Matthew, the, the, the story of John the Baptist, or in reality, his name should be John the Baptizer because people were known by the verb form of what they did. Joe the shoe cobbler, Susie the whatever, you know, 